There's a lot of different places where we can cover this information that we're going to go over in this video. Uh, we're sort of at the midterm, which is where I suspect that this video will end up. As such, what it does, it's going to tie together the stuff that we've covered first and show you how we're going to use that in the second part of the course. So we're going to try to tie together the first part of the course with the second part of the course with this video. And uh, yeah, you can see that it will go through and, and identify some of the questions or some of the uh, concepts that you've studied and then try to put that into determining which particular statistical test you're going to use. Now again, we're going to be following the same format that we followed earlier in that um, this is a video that has been previously produced and uh, so that it gives me a chance to go through and listen to it with you and as I listen to it I might have some comments that I want to correct um, or I want to correct something or change something or, or add to it and I think that that's a beneficial way to do that. So um, this, uh, this table uh, is given in the uh, information in, in the Moodle uh, uh, site. It is uh, called the statistical test table and uh, hopefully uh, by the end of this video you'll sort of see how that uh, that works out. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and get started on this information. See that based on the type of situation you're in and the type of data you collect, uh, what statistical test you should first look at uh, using. Uh, some of the considerations that you have, uh, first of all, you need to know uh, how many groups that you have. Uh, there's a difference between one group against a uh, standard variable or standard number, uh, two groups, uh, three groups, uh, what kind of, you know, whether it's independent data or whether it's uh, matched data or paired data. Uh, or is the data related to the collection of data? Is it related to each other? For example, if you're measuring the arm length and the leg length on the same person, then those are related because you're on the same same thing. But if you're measuring the arm length of different people, uh, those are not necessarily related because they're you know uh, independent people. Uh, how's the data measured? And we've talked about that before. Whether it's nominal, whether it's named data. Uh, you know, red, blink, red, blue, red, blue, green, not speaking very good today, uh, or whether it's uh, ordinal, you know, ordered, maybe agree, no opinion, disagree, uh, those kind of things, or whether it's interval or ratio. And a lot of times we think that, you know, we put interval and ratio together and they are the same thing because in that data, each interval has an equal uh, measurement between it. For example, um, uh, in a temperature scale, uh, the difference that it takes to go from one degree up to two degrees is the same amount of heat that it takes to go from two degrees up to three degrees. And uh, then we also have got a consideration of do, are we interested in an association between the variables or are we interested in seeing if there's a difference between the variables or a difference between the groups. And so I want to show you this chart and it's given on the uh, Moodle site under uh, statistical test table uh, and it uh, is, uh, you know, so you can just click on it and print it out for yourself if you want to look at it. But we start off on the left hand side with the goal. Do you want to describe one group, the central tendency and the variability? Well, if the measurement is ratio or interval, and the population is normally distributed, then you know, you'd certainly want to look at the mean, the standard deviation, and or the variance. But if it's ordinal data, then the standard deviation doesn't really work out so well. So you might look at the median and then the interquartile range. And then if it's a, a measurement is in nominal, which is typically binomial, uh, yes, no, uh, boy, girl, uh, those kind of things, uh, but you can have ordinal and ratio and interval data here, you would probably just get a proportion and then you know, calculate the standard deviation variance with the binomial. 
variables. If we're going to compare one group to a hypothetical value, okay, a one sample t test would work. The non-parametric measure of that would be the Wilcoxon test, and then of course you've got the chi-square. And we're going to see the chi-square is used in a lot of the stuff over here on the, uh, the nominal type of data. Uh, so the chi-square is going to show up quite a bit because it allows us to put things into categories real easy. If we're going to compare two independent samples, then uh, just an independent t-test or an unpaired t-test, uh, the Van Whitney test, which is in a lot of textbooks will be called the Wilcoxon rank sum test, but uh, I guess these guys had an argument about who did it first. I don't know. Uh, and then, uh, again, the chi-square test, uh, contingency table is essentially chi-square. If we're going to measure two paired measurements, so for example, you want to see, you now this is how, what the person's measurement was when they were one year old, and this is what their measurement was at two years old, and you want to see if there's a significant difference there or something like that. Then you use a paired t-test, and uh, again, you know, there's a Wilcoxon test, which is just a modification of the one that was, that was up here. Um, if we're going to compare uh, three or more unmatched groups, uh, then we can use an analysis of variance. And again, probably as you're viewing this video, you haven't seen some of these tests yet. And that's one of the benefits of putting it onto a video is that, uh, you know, you can watch it now and then maybe in another couple of weeks after you've seen some more of these, you can go back and you can, uh, you can uh, see how it, it fits in. Or uh, the better way to do that would be to print out this uh, reference table and then as you go through and, and see each one of these, you can check off and, and see how it works out uh, or how they fit in with each other. Um, and again, uh, the repeated measures of NOVA, that's beyond the uh, scope of, of this course. Um, and the, if you're going to put an association between two variables, you could use a Pearson correlation, again, if it's an interval or ratio, and then uh, if it's ordinal data, then the Spearman uh, correlation works. Uh, and then again, the type of uh, chi-square uh, measurement there. If we're going to do prediction, uh, then the regression allows us to do that. And regression and association, or the Pearson correlation, are, are really related because you don't really want to do a regression. You don't want to say, this is what I predict the value is, unless there's a significant relationship as verified by the Pearson correlation because otherwise whatever prediction you'd have wouldn't make uh, much sense. I think that my 10 minutes on this first session there are about up, so I want to stop at this point and then we'll, we'll uh, uh, come back with the second part.